Hello everyone, I am Nutrix the Synth Guy, and today we're doing a different take. You see me from a different angle in the same studio, which is very small, very small. But with this angle, I'm going to talk today about the Mini Freak, and more specifically, the different engines. And I'm not going to say synth engine, because some of them are not linked to synthesizers, but more about effects processing, especially the one that you find in the second oscillator. Because in the first one, it's mostly synthesis. Outside of the audio input, when you can actually process it, the rest of it is synthesis. Actually, all of the others existed in the micro freak so i'll go through all of them just to show what they can do and a little bit hear what they can how they sound and explain why you would use each of them then we'll talk about the new ones the one that did not exist in the micro freak and what they can do there's some really cool deep <sighs> options there that you don't see a lot in the end i'll talk about what's missing because there's nothing missing if you want to really talk about it but if you compare it to the Micro Freak, there's some stuff in the Micro Freak that you don't find here anymore, and some people might, might feel that it's missing. Just remember, there's two oscillators. They're, they mostly can do the same thing, but there are some specific on oscillator one and two. Oscillator one has a bunch of different oscillators you can have, or synth engine you can use, and the last one is audio input, so you can send stuff into it. Oscillator two can also be a synth engine, but also can be a processor to process what's coming in from oscillator one. Now, by default, people think about, oh, you can process the audio in, yes, but you can just process oscillator one, which could be a sine wave or sawtooth and FM synthesis. It all depends on how you wanna use the two of them. So the second one could be just a processing for the first one or can be another oscillator. That's it. Now let's dive in. Oh, you have these top buttons here, the orange one, the type, the wave, the timber, and the shape. The type can change the type of oscillator you can have or the synth engine you can have. And for each of them, you have three options, the wave, the timber, and the shape. To be sure that you're only listening to oscillator one, you've got volume here. So bring the volume up for this one. I'm gonna sw switch to oscillator two and bring the volume down for this one. Now I'm really just, I'm just hearing oscillator one now. So oscillator one, I'm going back to this one. I'm still in oscillator one. And I'm gonna play with basic waves. Now you're basically blending between a sawtooth and a square wave. Square and saw. And then Kind of playing with the symmetry of it. And the last one is a sub, it's a sub oscillator, so it's an octave but down and it's a bass. So, so right now what you have is a sine wave sub oscillator, a sawtooth, and a square wave all playing at the same time. That's for oscillator one and the shape of basic waves. Second one is super wave. JP8000, that's where the super saw came out. I did another video about the JP8000 and the super saw. Here or down here, you'll look at it. It's pretty interesting, the notion of the super saw is basically, if you look at analog synthesizer, like the Prophet 5, if you put it in unison, you would have five, let's say sawtooth at the same time. So you have that huge sound. And then they would be basically a little bit detuned, and you can actually detune them a bit more. And you would get that very rich, raw sound that you would have five sawtooth playing at the same time, slightly detuned. The super saw basically wanted to mimic that, and it became a, I would say, a, a super special sound of the 90s that people say, well, this is so cool. And he created that moving sound. So a lot of people have been recreating that type of super saw in virtual because it was a virtual synthesis synth, the JP8000. And that's what you have here. You have the virtual super saw. So the first one is the shape itself. 
Now, normally it's super size only for a sawtooth, but in this case, they, they did it for square wave, triangular, and sine. Second one is how detuned they are. And the last one is the volume of all these detuned sounds, so you can actually have a bigger sound. Third one, harmonics. Harmonics are basically, uh, or harmo, they call it. Um, it's kind of an additive synthesis in a way. We have the original waveform, and you're adding all the other harmonics. As this one is sculpting, you're actually changing the shape of the sine wave to become triangular, so richer sound. So it creates an even richer sound that you can't find in additive synthesis. And the last one adds chorus. Now this one is... This one is the uh, corpless strong oscillator. This is one of the early ways of doing mathematical calculation to mimic uh, percussive sound like a piano or a string. So you would have, and if, we could do another video with just about acoustic instruments, but if you have, a, let's say, a piano or electric piano or even just a normal piano, you would have a hammer, which would be the trigger or the exciter. And then you would have the resonator where the source resonates. So um, let's say if it's on a drum, you're going to have the stick that hits the, the skin of the drum and the drum will resonate. Uh, the type of membrane will change, the, the type of, of you know drum you're going to hit on will change. Same thing with a string, so the fact that you're using a bow, it, that's the exciter. So, so for a guitar, you're going to pluck it. If you're using a, a drum, you're going to have you know percussion to hit it. All of these are different exciters. And then you have the source that vibrates, and then you get the resonator where it resonates, like the body of a piano, the body of a guitar. So all of these exist. So this, the Corpus Strong Oscillator, is basically imitating um, that you struck or you, you bow uh, the source. And then you basically, with this, change. So if you want to play this. You're playing, you're hearing the way you're using a bow on it. That's the volume of it. As this one. This one is the fact that you're you're hitting it, you're striking the the source. And this one. This is where you're hitting. So as you hit at different places, it changes the sound. Then we have the virtual analog actually recreates two oscillators and the same synthesizer in the same oscillator. So you have two waves, you have a pulse and a sawtooth. You can actually detune the pitch between the two, like this one here. So one sound, one oscillator compared to the other is detuned. And this one changes the shape, the pulse width of the square, whereas this other one changes the ch the last one changes the shape of the sawtooth. So from triangular to kind of weird sawtooth. So you're basically playing a two oscillator synth where you can actually detune it. So even just one oscillator is two oscillators. So a lot of options still here. Wave shaper. So it folds back the wave on itself. First one is the wave. So the wave form coming out. Then the amount of folding. And then the asymmetry of it, how asymmetrical it is. So why 
wide range of frequencies you can play with that. Pretty cool. The other one is two operator FM synth. So you get two operator, one being the modulator, one being the carrier, and you can change the ratio between them. So to create that. The amount of modulation and the feedback. Always fun to, to do that. Next one is uh, formant, so basically from the human kind of troth or sounding like a, a human voice. You're gonna have two formant frequencies playing here, so the day interval between the two. The bass formant frequency is the bass was the root key, if you want, of the formant, the interval between the two, and Next one you have speech. So this is just like sets of recordings of digital sounds. And you can play. So this kind of a, a, you're playing with the first one, you're basically going through different type of memories. That's kind of the speed of it. This is fun. Uh, modal is to create these percussive electric piano sound, like a Rhodes piano. So calculation in real time of how the hammer would hit the metal part and it would ring. So, so what you're gonna have here is the in harmonics. You have just a hit, and how many harmonics you want to hear? Actually, bring the volume, some de some DK. So you can control how bright it's gonna be. The exciter, if you want. And this are how in harmonic. So you're going to more of these metallic xylophone and stuff like that, or electric piano, or bells. This sounds, you know, it can go from kind of a wooden type of sound. So again, very difficult to do that type of sound if you didn't have these exciters and resonators for percussive kind of piano, xylophone, my, uh, marimba's type of sound. Next one, we have the noise. And the noise we have. Kind of a sample rate. Type of noise. Follow it, last one is the sine wave. Noise can be a lot richer than just a white noise and big noise and the next ones are really interesting. They come from noise engineering that you can find 
and modular synthesizer has modules. So this one is for the bass sound. We're gonna saturate the bass. Move an octave down. Can fold. A little bit like we talked earlier about the folding of the and we have the noise of the bass. Next one is the saw X. So a sawtooth that has cross modulation. You hear that? And the noise. So this is the shape of it. This Keep in mind that what makes these really cool is when you modulate them with um, LFOs on envelope, you have that. Arm. So what do we have with this? So you start with the fundamental frequency. It's a little bit like additive in a way again. So you just have the fundamental and then you add other harmonics. And and the rectify, this is to reposition the harmonics that I move kind of out. So, if you put it maximum, and that's what is noise. and fun sound with a lot of presence. Last one is audio in. Let's actually send something to it. Okay, so for this one, what I did is I took the drum coming out of the TR-8 and I have this disc drum playing. You have the fold here. In this case, it kind of controls the volume in a way. Okay, next one is the decimate. So, a additional distortion, a reduction of bits, basically. And you have the noise. And it works only when you play. Because if you send a drone into it, then it only opens when you play. So, and it becomes more obvious when you use the second oscillator, because now it's the last one. You cannot go anywhere else. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to go into the second oscillator, your basic wave. Now, instead of basic wave, I'm going to move right into the one called FM. actually interesting but this one now the it's an FM uh, and ring modulator so that's why you get FM slash RM you basically choose the waveform 
that's going to be modulating with oscillator one. Now, if the oscillator one is not a drum beat playing, we'll go back to one and say, let's say, we have this. Oh, yeah. We have our bass. Go back to second one. So you're doing a real full flange FM modulation between two operators, the operator of, of oscillator one and two, they're doing modulation here for frequency modulation. But then if you take the last one, it becomes amplitude modulation, uh, ring modulation the last one. It could be used for anything that comes into it or be used in this case with the other oscillator. Multi-filter is basically you get a cutoff point, the resonance, and you have the type of filter. Now this is interesting and important because if you look at the filter that is the analog filter on the My Mini Freak, it is a 12 dB per octave and that's it. You don't have any more control than that. You have a choice of low pass, bend pass, or high pass, but you don't have a choice of 6, 12, 24, whatever it is. In this case, you load the digital filter and this is what you get. You get all these options of a low pass 36, which is really odd, 24, something we see often, low pass 12, also we see often, low pass 6, I pass 6, I pass 12, I pass 24, I pass 36, a band pass 12, 24, 36, and then you get notch filters 12, 24, and 36. So you have the resonance, and you get the cutoff point. It works, you know. So if you want these other type of filters, you have it, and also it's good for anything that comes in, as we said earlier. Next one is the surgeon filter. So this is really to go in and edit specifically something, a little bit like um, a parametric EQ in a way. That's kind of what you have here. You have the cutoff. So basically the frequency when it's gonna happen. Next one is you have a choice of low pass, bend pass, high pass, notch filter. This is the spread. Come filtering. Now this this one is fun. The come filtering. Because the come filtering is called a come filtering because it's kind of a to come your 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 air your air. It's try this with a drum. That's gonna be cool. Let's go back to this one. You have the drum coming in. So the drum goes into Let's just go back to the drum to see if there's nothing else, just like this. So the drum is clean, okay. So that's a drum clean. If you add the filter... And by playing with that, it can become something else. Like my drum is almost becoming a bass line now. Because you don't hear that much of the original sound of the drum. So you're playing the filter. That's what you're doing. Again, pretty cool, weird, and cool. <laughs> Next one is the phase filter. So you're basically controlling the, the cutoff of it, the feedback in it, and how many poles you're using. It's a phaser, basically. 
Let's go back to... It's a phaser, but you have total control about it. So it's kind of having a phaser right here. Again, it's in the oscillator section. And that's where this is also surprisingly powerful because it means that you have a phaser for each of the six notes you can play. Totally different than having the effects at the end because you're actually using these for each voice that you play. The six voices can have its own phaser. So really powerful, a polyphonic effect right into this. So this is something we don't see often, not to say, at least at this price range, you never see that. So this is kind of a hidden feature that Arturia is not really talking about it. So that means that... So you can have a different reaction for each of your six notes if you assign LFOs and envelopes to it. And the last one is destroy. So a bit crusher, a sample rate destructor right into this. Again, per voice. So if you want to create kind of a piano sound that goes when it starts, it's clean. And as the key sustain, it becomes noisy. You could have each of these keys of these six keys that you play, these six voices that you play could all have that movement, but separately because this is a polyphonic effect, not the one that you have at the end. So pretty, pretty cool. It's something we don't see often and it becomes part of this, it really becomes part of the sound design. Cool. So these are the really cool uh, hidden features type of. I would say, well, now what's missing? I talked about it in my other video. If you have a micro freak, and then you get the mini freak, you go, okay, there's missing for what I'm used to. We're missing the wavetable. We're missing the wavetable, the wave user, you put your own sample into the wavetable and then use them. And we're missing the vocoder. I'm, I don't know, there's no information about what they're going to do about it, but I'm expecting them to do it, whatever. It's just, um, at least today, what I can say, if, if you want these wavetable and wavetable user and uh, vocoder, and you need that for your production, then don't get the mini freak, get the micro freak, because the mini freak does not do it. I'll do another video about just the effects. Again, there's some hidden, and the hidden features, there are a lot of hidden features there. And uh, that's it. Hope you like it. Hope it's useful. Put your question below and uh, make more music. See you soon. Cheers.